Hi, my name is Ben and I'm a member of the community team working on the Cyberpunk Red Core system for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. In this video, I'll showcase a few of the new features that the team have implemented in the July 2020 release, which is due to be released in the next few days, so that'll be early August 2021. Now, as always, please refer to the changelog, which I will link in the description below, just so you can see all the new features, changes, and all the bug fixes that the team have implemented. So first up, Subora items that act as weapons can actually now be configured as such and can be used in the fight tab of the character sheet. So say for example here, I've got this character that has a talon foot that they're installing onto a pre-existing cyber leg that they have. If we go to here and install it, for just uh, this purpose, I'll just say humanity loss of none, we'll go to install it. You can actually see here on the fight tab under Subora weapons, we actually have the ability to use this weapon now. So we can see here that we've got the attack, which will use the melee weapon from that. And we can also roll damage as well um, for the talon foot weapon. Now, um, we do provide these items to you in the compendium um, to begin with. Now, do note that if you are using a pop-up, say a melee weapon or a ranged weapon, you may need to tweak it depending on what sort of pop-up weapon type it is. So say, for example, out of the box, if we drop in the pop-up ranged weapon, we'll see here in the settings tab that this is just currently set to a medium pistol. You can change that for your character as you need to, or you can just create your own item um, yourself, or you can just duplicate this item if you like. So we could very easily just switch this to, say, a very heavy pistol, change the sort of settings, change the DV table, change the configured ammo type, so the magazine size, and so on and so on. So then from here, we can install it. Again, I'll just say humanity loss is none. And from here, the character now has a pop up ranged weapon that they can use, which is going to be their very heavy pistol. Another great new feature is the item upgrade item. So I'll give you a brief demonstration of that by using an assault rifle. So what we'll do is let's come down here, let's drag in an assault rifle. Let's grab some ammunition. Let's just say basic rifle ammunition. We'll just leave it at 10 for the time being. Uh, and let's also use our new item upgrades compendium pack. So we can see here that we provided a few examples to you from the cold rule books, such as drum and extender magazines, as well as a few cyber deck items. So say, for example, let's bring down a drum magazine that we want to add to the assault rifle. Now, if the item upgrade is of the same type as the uh, item, so say, for example, here we have the assault rifle weapon, we've got an item upgrade for the assault rifle. If we check the settings for this one, we can see that the upgrade type is weapon. There is actually going to be a new icon on the actions uh, section here. You can see that this one says manage upgrades. And we can see here for this assault rifle, we can add the assault rifle drum magazine. So select that one and confirm. And this is now an upgraded weapon. So we actually move to equip this now. We should see once I add some ammunition to this, that it now has a capacity of 10 out of 45. So that's actually now increased it. So we also do a uh, sort of reverse of this process and actually remove the item upgrade. We can do that quite easily by deselecting it and confirming. That's now removed the drum magazine uh, item upgrade and that's actually now put this back to 25. Now, the same thing also applies with cyber decks and physical hardware upgrades. So say, for example, that this character was actually a netrunner or they were holding a cyber deck. What we could do is we go to our gear items Let's grab a cyber deck, come back to our item upgrade section. Let's say that they have a few physical upgrades or physical hardware upgrades to their device, such as a backup drive, DNA lock. We can already see here that now that we have applicable item upgrade options under the cyber deck, we can go here, we can go manage upgrades, select to install and install. And just like that. So you can see that this cyber deck has a seven slots. We actually bring this up and go to the settings we can actually see that uh, based on the upgrade size which is also configured based on the item type it's actually automatically used some of the available slots for these items or these item upgrades and that's actually now limited the amount of available slots for programs on this particular cyber deck another feature as well is if you wanted to add an underbarrel weapon to your weapon so say for example uh let's remove the yep so let's make sure the drum magazine is removed from this assault rifle but we want to add in an underbarrel grenade launcher just to make this assault rifle quite powerful if we come back to item upgrades let's just search under barrel we've got a uh, grenade launcher under barrel bring this one down straight onto the character we can see here this is now an option in the item upgrades Come back to manage upgrades for the assault rifle, add in this one, 
and this has now also given us in the fight tab the actual weapon as well so we can see here this is the assault rifle attachment grenade launch under barrel so if you have the applicable grenade launch ammunition you can also define this here and this acts just like a normal weapon you can change the ammunition type you can reload you can also use a dv table as well if that's all uh, configured so that just gives you another few features now this does provide you the flexibility if you wanted to create your own item upgrade just by going here going to item upgrade there's quite a few different settings that you can define here under the upgrade item type and that just depends on which sort of item it can link itself to so say for example if you did armor you could either do a modifier or an override which sets the exact value for what you're after so say that we wanted to modify our let's say that we had some you know um some sort of like you know ballistic weaving in some of our ammunition types for body or head armor we can actually set this which will be a modifier to that value so we say body armor sp modifier of two I'll actually just set this name to something that's a bit better. Just as an example. Bring this down. Let's also bring down some ammunition. I'm um, sorry, some armor. So again, because we have the armor type and we've got the uh, item upgrade that matches the armor type, if we go here, go manage upgrades, we can add this and what I'll actually do first is let's just equip this and we can actually see this in action. So this is 15 out of 15. That's now jumped that up to 17 as well. So this goes, does give you some flexibilities if you have say a tech in your group that wants to actually do some item upgrades. You know, they can also improve the quality but they might be able to do something on the fly. Um, there are quite a lot of potentials that you could uh, implement with this as well. So say that you wanted to modify some clothing to give your modifier to your wardrobe and style or your cool. Uh, you can do, like I mentioned with Cyberdeck, you can actually modify how many slots you have available if you wanted to make your slots larger. Cyberware, you can define if you want to have a weapon as a part of the cyberware, which you've already covered. Um, same thing with some gear, if you want to modify um, your actual uh, entries as well. So if you want to have an item that modifies your tech or your cool or your willpower as well, if you wanted to sort of do some street drugs, um, it just gives you the flexibility uh, for both stuff from the core rulebook or just something that you make up that you can use for uh, this feature. There has been some interest from the community to uh, what we call split stacks. So let's say that we have a bunch of um, basic rifle ammunition that we potentially want to share or we want to split or we want to be able to potentially give to another party member. What we could do is let's say that we have a large amount of basic rifle ammunition. Okay, so we can see here that we have 100 bring this out a little bit you can see here that we have an action on the right hand side which is to split so it'll say how much do we want to split let's just say that we want to do this right down the middle with 50. this has now created two item types so or, you know uh, sort of a copy of the same item but they're both now 50. so with this we could potentially sell it we could um, you know transfer it to a different player there's quite a lot of different possibilities now this works for a variety of different item types just so you have that ability um, such as ammunition gear and clothing just in case you wanted to be able to split them uh, from uh, from one to the other another feature that you may not see regularly but if you're interacting with potentially some container items you may find this quite useful is say that you're adding in an item that you already have in your inventory so for this one let's just say i remove this basic rifle that we had before if I wanted to say add some ammunition in from the compendium, um, originally it would create different uh, sort of sets or different items for each uh, basic rifle ammunition that we're adding. But if you actually watch here as I bring some ammunition in, it'll actually just continue to add 10, which is what we have set in the compendium. So we have a 10 uh, amount. It'll actually just continue to add this to the character just like that. So this provides some great functionality, especially for those of you that are using the container actor type. If you're dragging something from a container actor, it will just increase the stack that you already have if you already have the item in your inventory. Speaking of container actors, let's take a quick look at those at the moment. So if we come here to create an actor, let's just call this a crate. Container actor, I'll minimize this character for just a moment and let's just add some items into this one.
Uh, you can see here there are a few options if you wanted to purchase potentially some or all. Now again, this is set because the GM settings are set to shop, but if we just say set this to loot, you could say if you just want one character to be able to take some merchandise or take some gear from this container, is that they have an option now to take some items or to take all items. So if we were to say have our character with Avar say that we only wanted to take you know, one or two, we could say we want to take two from the inventory. That's removed two from this container. And if we now look at our character, they have two boosts and their inventory. So again, just a, another handy feature for those of you that want to be able to take some, if not all, from a container actor. Now, let's say somewhere in the middle of your campaign, or maybe towards the end of the campaign, your characters have some downtime, and they want to play some elf lines online, or maybe it's a part of your character a plot hook. Maybe they have to meet an NPC that only wants to meet them digitally or electronically um, via elf lines online. Um, we do have support now from uh, providing you a character template or a character sheet that you can use for elf lines online, as well as what we call like an armory, which has a variety of different items that you can use. So if you aren't familiar with it, Artosaurian Games has provided to the community a bunch of free, uh, I guess you could say DLC or you know additional content for the RPG. One such example is called Elf Lions Online, which is uh, essentially a, a sort of a, a you know a couple of pages collections of rules and uh, settings that you can use within your game as sort of like an online you know MMO sort of experience that your uh, players can actually. Um, partake in. So in one of these pages, which I'll link in the description below, it actually provides you with some pre-generated elves. Now we can't provide you the characters ourselves, but we can provide you with the framework that you can use to add in the characters. So we can see here that we have uh, a character here with different stats. They have some weapons like a long sword. Uh, don't have any armor on this one, but they do have some stats and some inventory items. What we could do here is let's say that we have our characters that want to go into the uh, Elf Lions, you know, brain dance simulation. What we can do first is we just have to go to the companion packs that we have here. We have macros, Elf Lions online macros. What we can see here is let's just import both of these and we'll use them in just a second. Come down to a macro folder, which is just down the bottom left here. We can see here we have an option to create an Elf Lions online character. So we just come up here to our actors directory. We'll see that this will do its magic in just a sec. We execute this uh, macro. We now have an elf line character here. And you'll actually notice here, if you are familiar with the rules for elf lines online, is that some of these skills or stats are a little bit unique or a little bit different. So say for example here, um, we've got language of elven. Um, we've got a couple of uh, stats or skills that are combined. So there's like say evasion, dance, endurance, resist, torture, drugs. Uh, everything like that as well. So, it, you know, a couple of the stats or a couple of the skills are sort of modified in such a way that they're sort of, you know, two for one. But again, you know, feel free to check the uh, reference book for that. So let's say that you have a character now. What you could also do is you want to add in some uh, items that are also mentioned in the uh, in, in the pack as well. So we have here a create elf lines online armory. If we go here and execute the macro and then close, Come to the items directory. There's now going to be a folder that, sells elf, that says Elf Lines Online Armory. And this has a collection of example items that you can then add to your new character as you create them in the game. So let's say we have our Elf Line character over here. I'll just shorten this for just a moment. We can now give them some items. So let's say that we want to give them a long sword, give them some sacred herbs. And there you go. So just like that, we have a very basic character. We can obviously go in and modify their stats accordingly, but that just gives you the basic framework uh, just in case you wanted to play Elf Lines Online. Uh, shout out to one of our community members, and apologies if I'm not pronouncing this correctly, uh, A A Wrong 123 uh, who has uh, thankfully provided some data in terms of clothing, which we've now added as a clothing companion pack. So you can see here, these are a couple of examples that you can find in the core rulebook in terms of different uh, item or clothing types. So what we can do here is we have a character, let's say that we'll bring back Ava again for a moment. We can see here that we have the option to have clothing items. So we bring up the companion pack and let's just say that we want to give them, well, maybe let's just give them some nomad clothing. So we see here, all well, the bottoms, contact lenses, footwear, glasses, uh, hat, jacket, jewelry. So let's say that we want to give them top, bottoms, and a nice leather jacket. So just like that. So this is useful for roleplay purposes, just to know what your character is wearing. And you now have access to that in the companion packs, just in case you want to quickly get started. We've been trying to uh, add more information in terms of how the system works or how the system operates 
by adding some help articles on our GitLab wiki page. Now, um, uh, quite a lot of you may not be familiar that we do have some information on that wiki page. So we're actually providing some links in the system now to point you back to that help article. So let's say for any of these items here, say Ballistic Weave as an example, if you're looking at the item page or the item sheet, it's actually gonna be a little help button just up here, which says help article. This is actually gonna redirect you in a new tab, which should load for me as well to the relevant uh, help article on our GitLab wiki. So you can see here that for an item upgrade, which is what we looked at, so this is an item upgrade type, it's actually taken us to the item upgrades page. And this gives you a little bit of an overview in terms of what the item is, how the item works, and, and so on and so forth. So we have these for all different types of items uh, that are in the system at the moment. So just in case you're curious to say you wanna learn more about how, how Cyberdex work, Again, like let's say that you're starting fresh, you're just not sure how things may operate. You can look here, you can go click this one. It'll take you right to the Cyberdeck page. And then this hopefully gives you a bit more written information just in case you're curious in terms of how things work, how you can get started, how you can modify things. Say, say for the Cyberdeck, you want to add in programs and just like that. So if you wanted to learn a bit more about the system, but you don't want to watch these videos, feel free to check out our, our wiki. We do have quite a few helpful articles on the right hand side here, as well as through the system. Uh, and hopefully that helps get you started in terms of figuring out the system a little bit more. So that'll just about do it for the July release. Uh, thank you to everyone in advance for uh, your patience for this one, where the team have been a little bit busy with their, you know, their own lives and some personal projects as well. So we haven't had a chance to release this during July. So it is coming out just in the sort of early days of August. Um, as always, if you have any feedback, comments, please feel free to leave them in the description below. We're always happy to have new members of the team joining us. So I'll also link down our Discord link below as well as the GitLab page. So feel free to join us. It is an open sort of source project. You know, we're happy for members to come on and join us so uh, we definitely love for you to be a part of the team